Hey y'all, let's take a look at linear equations again. And these keep popping up over and over through just about every math you take, starting with algebra and keeping on going over and over. And it's a good idea just to be really kind of familiar with the whole idea of what's going on. Knowing the babysitter analysis or the babysitter interpretation of this line is really helpful and to, know, and to kind of understand what's going on with this thing. So this is not just a random thing that like just, you know, when I was in high school, I understood kind of how to do it, but I didn't know what the deal was with it. Anyway, so this is a babysitting example. You tell me, how much money do you make? Uh, well, here's a question. How much do they charge you for renting the babysitting, let's say, center? Three bucks, right? All right, how much money do you make per kid? Okay, and the question is, how much money are you going to make babysitting tonight? And the answer is, depends on the number of kids, right? Okay, so that's how, how, that's how much you find out how much money you make. The money you make is here. That's the dependent variable. This is the independent variable. That's the number of kids. And you times it by two and subtract three, and boom, there you have, you know, that's your intercept, a slope-intercept form of a line. And you remember, this is the slope, the slope right here. As a fraction, it's two over one, if you want to call it that, or four over two, or 98.3 over 49.15. I don't care what you want to call it. It's two over one. That is on the line where it cuts across the y-intercept. And you can just draw this. You can probably visualize this. It, you know, it starts at negative three, goes up to the right, two up and then one over, two up and then one over. And that's how you just visualize that line. You can write the exact same thing, y equals two x minus three uh, in standard form, what they call, which just means you have, you know, I'm just gonna flip this first because it's the same thing. Uh, if you write it like this, it's just the same thing. A standard form is you have the x first, you move the y over here, that's going to turn, turn into a negative y. You have the c, which is the constant, and that equals zero. And we've, uh, you don't see that as often, but you should be able to look at a line that's in standard form like that. You know it's a line because there are two unknowns, one unknown, two unknowns, and their uh, exponent values are both one. That's how you know it's a line. You stick something in for y, you get something for x. You stick something in for y, you get something for x. You plot the points, boom, there you go. Hey boss, you know, it's basically, hey look boss, if we spend this much advertising, we got this much sales. If we spend this much advertising, we got this much sales. Hey, if we spend this much advertising, we got that much sales. That's the advertising, that's your sales. There's no perfect line for this, but uh, graphs are helpful in kind of trying to predict things and look at past uh, experience. So anyway, all right. If you need to copy this down, go ahead and pause and copy and let's talk about it together. All right, here's the deal. They will say, find the equation of a line that passes through this point and that point, okay? And the temptation in these is to go up uh, and like just want to go wander as a hermit or change religions or, you know, I don't know, bang your head against a wall, whatever. I can tell you a really simple way of solving any of these equations where they say, find the equation of a line that whatever you can fill in the blank. And that first thing is to absolutely just go like this. Y equals slope X plus the Y intercept. There you go. That's what you need to do. Okay. All you need to do now is figure out what the slope is and you need to figure out what the y-intercept is, and that is it, okay? That's what you need to find. You need to find the n, and you need to find the b. Have they given you enough information to find those? Sure they have, okay? Now, if you look at this graph, you ain't gonna be able to find the b. I mean, what is b? You know it's like negative something, right? Is that negative one-fourth, one-fifth, two-elevenths? Uh, who knows? So you know that looking at it isn't gonna be the way you're gonna be able to solve it. So anyway, we, We'll first use this to find the slope, okay? And remember, we figured out a way to be able to find slope using two points. Remember that method? You take the y's and subtract them, put it on top. You take the x's, subtract those, put them on bottom. That's your fraction, right? Well, first off, question for you. Will this be a positive fraction or a negative fraction? We're looking at it you know it's going to be positive, right? Okay, but you won't always be able to look at it. They might even do this where they don't even show you a picture. So you're just going to have to go like this. Y is equal to mx plus b, slope x plus the y-intercept, okay? So we need to find the slope first. Let's find it, okay? So the difference of the y's, I'll just start with the first one, right? 2 minus 
negative 3, which is the same thing as 2 plus 3. That's on top. Since I started with the 2 in the, in the, on the top, I'm going to start with the 4 on the bottom. So 4 minus negative 5, which is 4 plus 5, right? Okay. So the slope is 5 over 9. We're halfway there, right? Look what we can do now. We've got half of what we need. We figured it out just by using the slope formula. By the way, if you ever get stuck and your brain freezes and you go, oh no, I don't know the slope formula. Fine, get a piece of graph paper, plot the two points and go, go one, two, three, four, five up. And then one, oh, a negative five. That's one, that's five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got it, five over nine, okay? It's not the end of the world. We don't always remember every formula, you know? Don't worry about it, okay? All right, so we got it. Now, what do we need to find now? The y-intercept. Good luck look, looking at an eyeball on it. You ain't gonna be able to do it unless you're some magic person. So anyway, um, well, here's our equation. You tell me, what do we need to find number values for so that we have nothing but b left? Nothing but b. In other words, we wanna solve this equation. What do we need numbers for? Okay. Yes, and if you said X and Y, you're correct. If you said something else, bad, bad. Okay, go eat some raw gluten and come back. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's what we need. We got an X here, we got a Y here. Well, guess what we have? An X here and a Y there. Oh, and if you want, an X here and a Y there. So you can stick, you won't believe this, but you can stick either one of these pairs in there for X and Y, and you will get the correct answer, okay? I would probably choose four and two. That looks like, you know, easier things to piddle with than negatives. So we can actually, you know, I'll just cross it out. We can write this equation here all over again. Y is equal to five ninths times X plus B. Well, forget that. Let's just put the X and the Y in there, right? Dunk, okay? So they tell us, uh, 4 and 2. Well, x is 4, right? I'm just going to put that in there. We can stick it over a 1. And then y is 2. There's my y. Okay, well, we can do that. So 2 is equal to 20 over 9 plus b. And we'll go, I don't want to write 2. I'll just write 18 over 9, right, instead, so that it matches up this one. So 18 ninths minus 20 ninths is negative two ninths, right? That is your, there we go. Okay, so that's what we stick right there. And we're done. I'm telling you, take it from an old man. If they tell you, find the equation of a line that blah, 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 whatever, you write y equals mx plus b. Start out by doing that, and then try to fill in the blanks. That's what your job's gonna be, okay? Is negative two ninths a reasonable answer? Yeah, I mean, looking at the drawing, yeah, that's reasonable. Yep. If you got y equals five ninths x plus 50, mm, I don't know, okay, so you might wanna try that again. Okay, so again, write an equation of a line, a generic one, y equals mx plus b. Figure out what m is, the slope, by using your formula. If you get stuck, just count, you know, graph the thing and count, and then you can find the b by just plopping in either one of those points, um, for the X and the Y, and you got it, okay? Let's try another one, all right? Copy this down if you need to. All right, ooh, no picture, right? Okay, so we, we, we don't know what to do. Oh, no, yeah, we do. We're gonna start up by going Y equals slope X plus Y intercept. Y equals MX plus B. Now we gotta fill in the blanks, okay? Well, it passes through those points. We know how to find the slope. The y is subtracted over the x is subtracted. So, I don't know, I'll just start with this one. Negative two minus the other y is negative minus four, okay? All right, well, since I started with negative two at the front, I'll start with this one in the front. Four minus negative three, which is plus three. Okay, so what, negative six over seven? There we go. Now, we are in better shape, we're halfway there. So we got, instead of an M, we got ourselves negative six over seven. This is gonna be a real fun one to do. Okay, well, I don't care. We can use this point, which is an X and a Y, or we can use this point, which is an X and a Y. 
to figure out what the B is. Because we're going to have to find a number for Y, or X and a number for Y. So I don't know, let's just choose the second one just for the heck of it, okay? So we're not going, we're going to rewrite this equation. I'm not going to write Y, I'm going to write 4. 4 is equal to negative 6 sevenths times X is negative 3, right? So times negative 3, just put it over 1, plus B, okay? Well, 4 is equal to, let's see, negative 10, 6 times negative 3 is a positive 18 sevenths plus B. Okay, well, I'm going to rewrite my 4 so it has a 7 as a denominator. You tell me, what should that be? 28. Okay, so 28 over 7 is 18 sevenths plus B. So B is equal to 28 sevenths minus 18, so 10 sevenths. Okay, well, I mean, we're done. We're done. That's all we're going to do. We found the B. There it is. Plus 10 sevenths. Okay, there you go, which is, so the y-intercept is going to be 10 divided by 7, like 1 and a half. Actually, 1.428571, but it's okay. There's our equation. Got it. Okay. All right. Let's try this one. A little bit strange. This one's a little odd, okay? Anytime, you got to train yourself. Anytime you see something that says, find the equation of the line that, don't even think about it. Just write this. Y equals mx plus b, slope x plus the y-intercept. It passes through the points 4, 3, and 4, negative 3. Okay, well, let's figure it out. 4, 3, and 4, negative 3, let's figure out the slope, all right, first. All right, difference, we have to subtract the y's. So we got 3 minus negative 3, that's going to be 3 plus 3, over 4 minus 4, that's going to be 6, uh-oh, uh uh-oh. What happened here? Oh no. How can that be? How can we have six minus or divided by zero? That ain't gonna work. Well, can you visualize the line that passes through four, three? Like here's four and there's three, right? And here's also four and then negative three. All right? Uh-oh. Like that, right? Well, what is that if this is a four right here? Okay, you probably know that that's going to be x equals 4. So sometimes when you get some funky answer like this, you know, visualize what's going on there and you can figure out what the actual line is, okay? And again, you might get something like this. Well, it gives you a line if you, if you, want, if you graph it or kind of think about it or look at it, it's going to look like this. And of course, you know that'd be something like y equals, I don't know, it looks like about 2 or something like that. Anyway, okay, don't forget those types of lines. Okay, we're going to do two practice problems. And uh, see what we get. Okay, so pause it and try A. All right, let's go ahead and do our first part. Always write this down, and then we'll fill in the blanks. Okay? All right, passes through that and that. Well, let's go. All right, well, let's say the difference of the y. So negative 5 minus negative 1, that means plus 1. And then 3 minus 2. There we go. And that's going to be negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. And 3 minus 2 is 1, so the slope is just negative 4 over 1, or just 1. So we're halfway there. So I'm going to erase this in and stick in a negative 4. All right. I don't know. Which one of these you want to use? The 3 negative 5 or 2 negative 1? doesn't matter. Let's just say you chose to use this one. Okay. It'll work. This will also work. I'm going to choose to, uh, to do this one and see what happens here. So that's my x. That's my y. It goes into this equation. All right? So no y anymore. I want to write negative 1. Negative 1 equals negative 4 times the x is 2 plus b. All right? So negative 1 equals negative 8 plus b. And the b, I'm going to move my negative 8 over here, becomes positive 8. And so b is equal to 7. So there's my answer. b is equal to 7. Now let's just say, and you can skip ahead if you want to. I'm just going to show you. Let's say I chose this instead. <clears throat> I said y is equal to negative 4x plus b. And I didn't. I just chose this. That's my x. That's my y. So I'm going to go y at negative 5 equals negative 4 times x. Well, negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. 
plus B. And B, if you that 12 over there, it turns into positive 12. 12 minus 5 is also 7. So either one of those would work. You can use any one you want. That's your equation of the line. Can you visualize that? What's that line look like? If you had to draw it, think for a second. What's the line look like? Is it going up or down? Down. What's the y-intercept look like? Okay, so look kind of something like this. Way up here at 7, there's a point, right? And it's going down like that. That's what it looks like. Okay, pause it and try B now. Okay, you know what to do to start these things. Y equals mx plus B. I promise you, training yourself to do that will get you out of a lot of problems. Except for something like a traffic ticket or something. So follow the speed limit. All right, so y equals mx plus b. My slope, what is my slope? Well, difference of the y's, negative three minus five. There we go. The second thing, negative three minus six. Okay, well, negative three minus five is negative eight. Negative three, did I do that right? Negative three minus five, negative three minus six, I guess I did. Okay, so negative three minus six is negative nine. Well, negative divided by negative is a positive. So that's going to be 8 over 9. So that's our slope, which means this line is pointing up and to the right. Okay, so 8 ninths. All right, now, you know, it doesn't matter which one you pick. We saw that it's going to work every time. Um, I don't know what the heck. I'll just pick 6 and 5, whatever. So Y, I'll put 5. 8 ninths. I'll just go ahead and do this in my head. 8 ninths times 6 means it's going to be 48 ninths, right? Plus B. <clears throat> now what I'm gonna do is, to save myself a little bit of time, I am going, you know what? It, I'll, I'll just do it at the very end. Okay, so five equals 48 over nine. Did I do that right? I did, okay. So I want, I'm not gonna put a five over one. I'll put something over nine. Of course, that'll be 45, right? Okay, all right? So 45 ninths equals 48 ninths plus B. That gets over to the left side, so 48, excuse me, 45 minus 48 is negative 3 over 9, which reduces to negative 1 third. And that is my B value. There we go. So I will stick negative 1 third in here for B, and that is my answer. There you go. Okay. All right. See you guys next time. Have a great uh, rest of the day.